We're simply proposing that an international panel on AI safety modeled on the IPCC would focus on establishing the scientific consensus about where capabilities are at and where they might be going. Are we on the verge of an AI pandemic? Google DeepMind co-founder says so in a recent episode of The Diary of a CEO contained an alarming warning from Mustafa Suleiman about the technology he helped unleash on the world. This warning will surely go viral. The darkest scenario is that people will experiment with pathogens, engineered synthetic pathogens that might end up accidentally or unintentionally being more transmissible, he said. According to Suleiman, AI-modified viruses might spread faster or be more lethal, ultimately resulting in more harm and possibly even human deaths like pandemic. We're working with dangerous things, he added. We can't let just anyone have access to them. We need to limit who can use the AI software, the cloud system, and even some of the biological materials. The DeepMind co-founder is calling for a containment strategy on AI akin to the one NATO has in place for nukes because with more people than ever learning how to use the technology, there's little to stop anyone from genetically engineering a viral pathogen, worse than anything ever seen and unleashing it on the world. According to Suleiman, the only possible way is to limit the access of tools and only allow the know-how to carry out the experiments. Mr. Suleiman has asked for the ability to restrict access to cutting-edge AI technology and software that run such models, much as these are constraints in place to prevent individuals from easily obtaining deadly microorganisms like anthrax. Now the CEO and co-founder of Inflection AI, Suleiman attended the AI summit led by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer in September in Washington, D.C which featured other industry lumineers like OpenAI CEO and co-founder Sam Altman, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai, and of course Tesla CEO Elon Musk. Suleiman's worries that been shared by several of the other AI forum participants. For example, a recent expert from the upcoming biography of Elon Musk describes how the multi-hyphenate billionaire discussed the perils of AI with both Larry Page, co-founder of Google, and former President Barack Obama albeit neither, in his memory, was willing to take action. There's no doubt that these smart and contentious minds will have a lot to say about the future of AI, but it's not apparent if any of them share Suleiman's concerns about pandemics caused by AI. Musk revealed plans to create a chat GPT competitor after months of foreshadowing the creation of a new artificial intelligence-focused business. The organization known as XAI presented a website and a group of 12 employees. According to the website, Musk will serve as the new company's CEO and will work closely with X, previously Twitter, Tesla, and other companies to make progress towards our mission. After warning in an interview that he believes AI might lead to civilization destruction and joining other industry executives in calling for a halt to an out-of-control AI race, Musk announced the launch of new firm a few months ago. A halt in AI technology development, according to Musk, is no longer a realistic option. He expressed hope that XAI will offer an alternative course of action. I would pause artificial intelligence or truly powerful digital superintelligence. That doesn't seem to be possible, so XAI will essentially create an AI, hopefully in a positive way, he said. Other information about the company's goals was not immediately accessible, but its website states that hiring is underway. The website currently only shows a dozen employees, all men. The billionaire presented his idea for XAI for the first time during a 90-minute, somewhat rambling Twitter Spaces audio chat. He also veered in discussions of the Earth's evolution and the frailty of civilization. Musk equipped that XAI's mission statements would be, what the hell is going on to increase our understanding of the universe? Musk founded XAI after claiming that firms like OpenAI and Google were creating the technology without taking human health hazards into account. Requests for comments from OpenAI and Google went unanswered. This year, the richest person in the world signed a petition urging a halt to the construction of massive AI models like ChatGPT, a chatbot created by the U.S. company OpenAI. Fears that the advancement of AI technology will accelerate beyond human control are mounting. Mr. Sullivan's comments reaffirm worries expressed in previous research that even college students without relevant knowledge of biology may provide specific recommendations for bioweapons from AI systems. Chatbot, according to researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, could offer four potential pandemic pathogens and describe how they could be created from synthetic DNA in less than an hour. The study discovered chatbots supplied the names of DNA synthesis companies unlikely to screen orders, identify detailed protocols and how to troubleshoot them, and recommended that anyone lacking the skills to perform reverse genetics engage a core facility or contrast research organization as well. 
Large language models like ChatGPT will make pandemic class agents widely accessible as soon as they are credibly identified, even to people with little or no laboratory training, according to the study. Non-proliferation measures were recommended by the research, whose authors included MIT bio-risk expert Kevin Esvelt. The use of pre-released evaluations of LLMs by third parties, curating training datasets to remove harmful concepts, and verifiably screening all DNA generated by synthesis providers or used by contrast research organizations in robotic cloud laboratories to engineer organisms or viruses are a few examples of such measures. Machine learning models are occasionally created to resemble human decision-making, such as determining if social media messages violate harmful content regulations in an effort to increase fairness or decrease backlogs. However, researchers from MIT and other institutions have discovered that these models frequently fail to mimic human judgments regarding rule infractions. Models are prone to make different, frequently harsher judgments than humans would if they are trained with the proper facts. In this instance, the right data are those that have been annotated by people who have been specifically asked if certain objects violate a particular rule. To teach a machine learning model a task, millions of samples of this normative data are presented to it during training. However, the data used to train machine learning models is often labeled descriptively, which means people are asked to identify true aspects like, for example, the existence of fried food in a picture. Models then determine whether a meal violates a school policy that forbids fried foods typically overestimates rule infractions from descriptive data are used to train them. In the actual world, this decline in accuracy could have detrimental effects. For instance, the researchers' findings imply that the descriptive model is used to decide if a person is likely to re-offend and may make stricter choices than a human would, which could result in larger bail amounts or longer prison sentences. The researchers conducted a user study to learn more after being taken aback by this discovery. Four data sets were gathered to imitate various regulations, including one of the dog photos that would be in breach of an apartment's ban on violent breeds. Then they asked various participant groups to offer normative or descriptive labels. In each instance, the descriptive labelers were asked to say if three factual characteristics, like whether the dog appears aggressive, were present in the image or text. After that, judgments were made based on their response. If a user reported that the picture had an aggressive dog in it, the rules had been broken. The pet policy was unknown to the labelers. However, normative labelers were given the rule banning violent dogs before being asked whether or not each image broke the rule and why. The researchers discovered that under the descriptive environment, people were substantially more likely to classify an object as a violation. On a data set of photographs used to assess dress code violations, the disparity varied from 8% to 20%, which they calculated using the absolute difference in labels on average. The gap was higher for the dog images at 20%. Although we didn't specifically investigate why this occurs, one theory is that perhaps people's perceptions of rule violations differ from their perceptions of descriptive data. Normative judgments are typically more forgiving. Fixing this requires openly admitting that we can only replicate human judgment by using data that was gathered in that environment. In the absence of this, our systems will have highly strict controls that go much beyond the humans would do. Humans might distinguish between subtleties or make other distinctions, but these models don't. So that's it for the video. We hope you liked it. If yeah, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, follow our channel. Thanks for watching.